What's up, bros? This is Matt, a.k.a. Lloyd Milligan, and started out doing a re review of the brand new XBLA game called I Am Alive, and I decided to change it into just kind of a discussion of video games, and this game really piqued my interest for a variety of reasons, but uh, so I'm going to kind of explain a few things about it, and uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing I want to talk about is difficulty. Games back in the day, back in my day... <laughs> Uh, games were fucking hard. Uh, take, like, you know, one of the first games you could think of, uh, Super Mario Brothers. Even the first few iterations of that game, they were fucking hard and punishing. You know, you had a few lives, and if you lost those lives, you just have to start the whole game over. Like, there's no, no save points, nothing. Um, I remember, uh, most people remember the game called Contra. You start with three lives, and... I don't know, maybe a couple continues. You're supposed to beat the whole game without fucking dying. Like, and, <laughs> like, the the whole code, uh, the Contra code, everyone knows, like, to help you beat that game, all it gave you was 30 lives. Like, uh, I was recently playing at my nephew's house, Super Mario Galaxy 2, and, I mean, you get basically infinite lives in that game to beat it. Uh, and it's almost, like, to the point where, why do they even include lives in the game? Now, I was playing that game and like, I was at a difficult part. And I was about to lose my last life, and I'm like, "Oh shit, dude, we're about to die!" And my, my nephew's like, "Oh, don't worry about it. You just, you just get three more lives. So when you lose your last life, you start at the exact same place and you get three lives. So it's like totally fucking pointless. And like that's how games are these days. There's no, it's basically like a interactive story you're not really like using your skills to beat a game you're just taking enough time to do it and uh so yeah so how does that relate to i'm alive well i'm alive has a similar sort of punishing system it it's pretty hard there's two difficulty settings and the, the if you pick the most or uh, the difficulty setting the 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 very hard one it is pretty damn hard game and it's like that you you, you get like a few retries they call them retries. Basically, it's lives. You can earn them throughout the game, and uh, you can't earn very many of them. And once you use, once you run out of them, if you die at any time in the game, you go back like probably like you know, 15 to 30 minutes of war of t of time played. You have to go back and play over, and that mentality. Uh, it, it kind of brings me to my next point, which is I like game mechanics, even if they're sort of shitty or... Like, that that can be considered frustrating. Like, I have to play over a bunch of shit. But I like game mechanics, even if they're frustrating, if they contribute to sort of the mentality of the game. So, um, let's take a game like Resident Evil back in the day. A lot of people love that game. It's really uh, scary, whatever. Um, but... Even, even so, there was huge complaints about that game because of uh, a few game mechanics, like, for example, um, the cameras in that game. They're really uh, sketchy. Um, they're fixed cameras, so it's a third-person game. If you haven't played Resident Evil, it's like a scary game, and it's third-person, so there's a set camera like in a corner of a room when you enter a room. You can't control the camera at all. And so, uh, you know, as you're moving around, your direction, to your orientation changes. It's kind of hard to move through the room. But uh, what that does is it creates, it, it enhances how scary it is. If you can't control the camera, it's like uh, you feel like you have less control. And that's a big part of, of Resident Evil in general is uh, you don't have this super powerful character that you feel like can just beat ass. You have a wuss, and he can't do shit. He is a victim of the situation. He's not in control of it at all. So, um, yeah, so that, that game mechanic, and another thing in Resident Evil, you couldn't shoot while run. Uh, you couldn't shoot while moving. So, um, you know, that that's a foreign uh, concept now in, in, you know, today's games. And then one other thing is you had to, like, you couldn't, if you're walking in one direction, you couldn't immediately walk in any other direction. You have to turn. Like, your character physically turns to a new, uh, face a different direction, and then you can start moving in that direction. So, um, yeah, like, that's, like, if something's behind you, you're fucked in that game. And that's, like, you know, that's scary, obviously. Like, in real life, if you're scared, you don't want anything behind you. So, that, that works. And so, how does that relate to I Am Alive? Well... 
for example, uh, you don't want to die in this game because of what I said earlier, because you have to go back and replay a big section. And that mentality means you're super careful, which obviously in a, like a survival game, this is a survival game where there's like an ap apocalyptic event. If I haven't said that, we're five minutes in and I haven't said anything about the game, that's great. But uh, so yeah, this is an apocalyptic game. The, wor the world's over and everyone is like, you know, greedy and in gangs and, um, you know, the, there's <clears throat> just like ruins everywhere and like it's a scary place to live because everyone's fucking evil. There's like uh, uh, cannibals and shit because food's slacking, whatever. So, um,. Yeah, if in this world, if you lived in that world, you'd want to be super fucking careful. Like, you'd, you wouldn't want to go anywhere. You'd want to, uh, like, hunker down and, and not help people, not trust people. So, anyways, yeah, so that's one area that's enhanced, I think, by a mechanic that you could consider frustrating. And, um, yeah, like, a lot of the reviews of the game said a lot of this shit's frustrating. For Another thing was... Um, the fact that you don't like you don't have any bullets so uh, in this game you, you literally have zero bullets when you start the game and you almost always have one bullet in your gun maybe two maybe th like once I had three and so what that means is when you see someone your first instinct is I don't want to I, I want to avoid that person and it's like you know, you will try and go around. You'll really take your time. And that, I think, again, is like, I kind of think that's how this situation would be in real life. So, like, uh, if the world was over and everyone was a fucking asshole trying to get you, you would, you know, avoid people at all costs. And then, um, but when you do have to fight someone, when they sort of come at you, you, like, in this game, you really kind of plan things out. Like, I don't want to shoot a bullet if I don't have to. I can kick this guy off the cliff, and I can surprise this other guy with my machete. And so uh, it makes you really consider your resources and really take your time when planning out these fights. And then, um, so yeah, that's another cool feature. Another thing that people complained about a ton in all the reviews that I saw was that the uh, like the graph the graphics were good except there's all this dust everywhere and uh, so like they don't render out any of the like long distances because you can't see that far it's like well uh, there's a giant earthquake there's there would be you know all these buildings fell down there'd be fucking debris everywhere and that just enhances the fucking scariness of the whole situation like uh, <clears throat> constantly as you're walking around in this world you're gonna be like holy shit is that is that a dude is that a mailbox and I, again I think that is kinda how you'd be behaving in, in real life if you're in this situation and so uh, yeah I, I think overall it's just this game just kinda makes me feel like I'm in this world at night it's even you can't see shit at night in this game it's you know you feel like you're pretty much blind and it's frustrating if you're trying to play a game and you can't see anything, but, you know, if the world was over, you would never want to go out at night, ever. Like, so, anyways, bottom line, this game is, has frustrating elements, but they, almost all of them help contribute. One area that really kind of blows is you have to climb around a lot, and the climbing controls are not good, and, you know, I guess you could say that, uh, You'd turn my argument against me and say that, um, you know, climbing is difficult, la la la, but uh, it's not like, I don't know. The way they, they, they do it in the game, it's, you can, it's not like it's difficult in that, you know, you, I don't know. It just doesn't feel authentic at all. It doesn't feel, the experience of it is not enjoyable in a difficult way or any way. It's, it's sort of just tedious and, um, you know. Like I said, obviously you could turn my argument against me here, but I don't know. Just that part feels different. So um, overall, this is a very fun game. If you guys have a chance to get it, oh, and there's a story with uh, he's trying to find his family, and it's it's pretty cool the way it's told and stuff. It's just a, an interesting game, and uh, like I said, it reminds me of like old games in that it's difficult and it's unforgiving, and if you uh, 
if you're interested in this genre at all, like horror slash survival, I really recommend getting it. And uh, peace, guys. See you on the next one.